Yes. And uh, of sociology and chair of sociology at San Diego Mesa College. Fellow sociologist here. Um, <laughs> um, and I'm also be the vice president of the AMT 1931. And what is bringing me here uh, is my work as a court appointed special advocate and my candidacy for the uh, San Diego uh, County Board of Education and District Court. Um, so as a court appointed special advocate for foster youth in San Diego, I work in a juvenile justice program, which means that uh, many of the youth I work with are high risk and are attending the juvenile justice school schools that fall under the direct purview of the County Board of Education. So when you have education rights, you get this very unique perspective of the student side, the teacher side, administrative side, and also child and uh, you know, uh, child and family and well-being, um, the uh, Department of Child and Family Well-being, I should say. Um, and so I feel like my background in public policy and uh, advocacy uh, please me just really want this position because I think I can help us stave off the alt-right conservative attacks that are happening on uh, education right now. So, um, uh, so yes, yeah, so I'll be running for uh, for that, and um, I would appreciate your support and everything. And I'm interested in saying and hearing how much. Could you please say your name if you want it? Yes, Aaron Evans, and I'm running for the San Diego County Board of Education and District Board. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. All right, Amber. Hello, SB Women Dims. My name is Amber Katie Antova. I am coming from Oceanside, California tonight. I am running for city council in Oceanside district number four. I am running because I'm a lifelong Oceanside resident. I have been there since 1989 and graduated from middle school, high school, and Miracosta College where I am back now as a sociology professor and have been an active union member there for eight years in the associate faculty. I have lived in my specific district since 2003 and my journey started there young in my adulthood when I applied and received low-income housing. And it was the ability to get into that low-income housing that allowed me to be stable as I worked my way through college and got two certificates at Maricosta College along the way and started my own wellness business, business where I now teach yoga and Pilates on the side and do mindfulness um, modalities next to my professor job. So I am really interested in Oceanside as in I have been an active member of the community and watching the shifts and change and growth over the last 20 years. We are the third largest city in San Diego County. We really have the opportunity to set precedents and set a beautiful example of how we deal with um, things like housing and homelessness. My platform is around housing and homelessness with my experience through low income housing. I'd really like to see a lot of or more options for our low to moderate income buyers. We've done really well for some high income earners in our area, but the diversity of Oceanside needs us to consider all purchasing options, also immediate solutions for homelessness, including um, the cities looking into a safe parking lot are important to me. Neighbors and neighborhoods are a top priority for me. Neighbors includes the diversity of Oceanside. I'm really looking to be um, bring more parity to our council in terms of women. Right now, we only have one woman on the city council, our mayor, Esther Sanchez, who has endorsed me. Um, but she is running for re-election, and I am running, and both of us getting elected would still only leave two out of five. So I'm really looking to bring that parity as a woman to the Oceanside City Council as well. Neighborhoods are also important to me when I look at our infrastructure. We have the new stadium that is open in my district. We'd like a public shuttle that could help reduce the use of the locals on that infrastructure in our roads. Similar to the ones down here, not in great shape, would love to see a citywide audit. Lots of things. Check me out on Amber KAE number four Oside.com. That's my website, or Amber KAE number four Oside on Instagram. And I thank you for your time tonight. Thank you, Amber. Anybody else in the room? All right, let's go to the Zoom. John, what do we got over there? Kevin Jusa. Let's hear from Kevin. Good evening, everyone. My name is Kevin Juza. I'm running for Assembly District 75. It's East County, San Diego. Um, I'm a, I'm, I, live in, I live in Poway. I'm, I've been in San Diego County for 17 years. Uh, I am a father of twin girls that are wicked smart. They're juniors at Poway High. 
I, I, my, my spouse, Kim is a, is a uh, teacher at, in Pomerado. She teaches fifth grade. I've been very active in the, my, in Poway community for the last 10 years, uh, give or take while, while my kids were in school, being active in the, in elementary and middle school. Um, the reason why I'm running is simple. Assembly District 75 hasn't had a representative that actually worked for the people uh, for a long time. Over the past 10 years, there's only been one really project came from Sacramento to help our district. That was a fire station with a mile from the current Assembly District uh, representative, Maria Waldron, who's actually termed out. So this is an open race. The candidates that are running against me uh, are two Republicans, the top candidates, uh, uh, Andrew Hayes and a gentleman by the name of Carl DeMaio. You might have heard of him. Um, he's a very divisive person, and my candidacy is really about bringing people together and finding ways to have all the tax money that we've spent over the years come back in some ways and means to make our community better. Um, I have been, uh, I own, I'm, I'm a small business owner. I help small, I help businesses build out sales teams. And that kind of really goes well with this, uh, this, this role as assembly member, because your job is really convince people in Sacramento that we need to invest in our East County in San Diego to keep this, this thriving economy working even better for them. So with that, I'm, I'm excited about being here. My name is Kevin Juza, and I'm running for Assembly District 75. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Kevin. And who do we have next, John? Francis. All right, you have two minutes. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Francis Yasmin Motiwala, she, her pronouns. Um, I am running for the Democratic Party Central Committee in the 79th Assembly District. Uh, I live with my partner in City Heights, in more specifically Cherokee Point, or as I like to say, the crotch of the 805 and the 15. Um, <laughs> it is, um, I am running for Central Committee uh, with hopes to bring more unity and repair trust within the Democratic Party. Um, I'm passionate about civic engagement and helping people understand electoral democracy. And I think that um, our party platform actually has a lot of really good stuff in it. Um, and there's a lot of great people in the party, uh, the people who show up. Um, I, I think that I want to hold uh, our electeds accountable um, for where they take money and where they, whose, whose priorities they prioritize. Um, and yeah, um, I previously ran in Los Angeles for Congress um, and came in third place with about 13% of the vote. And now I have my own consulting firm. Uh, I work uh, with a lot of nonprofit organizations uh, and I, uh, I'm working with one uh, incredible candidate that you'll get to hear from soon. Um, and maybe you can tell from my background who that is. With spoilers. Um, um, I'll just also state that um, I'm with um, Activist San Diego. I'm on the board. Um, I'm on the, and I'm with the um, Power San Diego campaign, working to bring public power to San Diego and lower our rates and reach our decarbonization goals. So I uh, wanted to be there in person, but the roads just aren't working in my favor. So good to meet, be there here virtually with you all. Thank you so much. Very nice. John, who do we have next? All right, Heather. Good evening. My name is Heather Ferbert. I'm a chief deputy city attorney and I'm running for San Diego City Attorney. I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person tonight. I'm recovering from a medical procedure, which you might hear in my sort of strained voice tonight. So I hope everybody got there safely. I'm excited for tonight's presentations. I'm running because San Diego needs a city attorney who's willing to enforce the law, uphold the law, and provide good solid legal advice. Um, you can learn more about me at heatherferber.com. And I think I'll leave it at that. I'm looking forward to tonight's meeting. Thanks so much. Thank you, Heather. Next up, we have Andy McNew. Hi, everyone. I hope you can hear me. I, uh, my name is Andy McNew. I am uh, sorry I can't be there tonight. I'm in Sacramento. Um, but uh, I am running for a Central Committee in Assembly District 75. I'm running because we uh, need to get back to our mission of electing Democratic candidates. 
in the East area, we have over 200 seats up for up during the general election from water boards, school boards, community planning groups. I mean, Democrats for every single one. Um, and I think a lot of division is going on in the party and we need to get away from that and get back to our main mission. Yeah. And also my other reason for running is I live in Ramona and I want to make sure that the party has rural representation and I want to expand our influence out into the rural areas of the county where have been typically ignored by the Democratic Party. And I think it's time for that to change. So uh, that's why I'm running. Thanks. Have a great day. Thank you so much, Andy. John, who do we have next? Stephanie Wells, nice to see you. Hello, thank you. Good evening. I am also sorry I couldn't be there. Getting down from Carlsbad is a little difficult uh, in this uh, with all the road closures up here. Um, so good evening. My name is Stephanie Wells, and I am running for Central Committee Assembly District 77. I'm actually here on behalf of myself and Nikki Faddock, who is also running but couldn't make it uh, due to a work meeting. Um, we are two Carlsbad moms who are currently serving on the committee. Nikki is currently a voting member, and I'm her alternate. Um, I'm also on the RISE Committee, helping defend our elected officials from right-wing right, right attacks. Um, in the community, we've worked on important issues like gun violence prevention, creating safe and equitable schools, and advocating for LGBTQ rights. Uh, we are proud to be endorsed by Supervisor Tara Lawson Reamer. Um, I encourage you to check out our Facebook page, Fatic and Wells for our Central Committee, uh, for more information. And please consider casting your vote for Nikki Fatic and Stephanie Wells on March 5th. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. I appreciate you coming. Brenda Miller, Dr. Miller, you're next. Hello, can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, hi. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, yes, I'm a registered nurse, over 40 years of nursing experience. I hold my doctorate in nursing, and I go by nurse Brenda Miller. After completing my doctorate, I have, you know, and, and my 40 years of nursing, I think it's time for me to join the Grossmont Healthcare District Board of Directors, Zone 3. I've lived in San Diego for over two decades <clears throat> in the healthcare sector as a practicing nurse. And I even worked at uh, Grossmont when I first came to San Diego. I'm an educator at Cal State. And I have to tell you, I have been out in the rain supporting California Faculty Association uh, fighting for better working conditions. And it was raining and I was there. Yay, go uh, Cal State. Um, I'm also a clinical administrator and I can't be there today because I'm at work. <laughs> so I am a homeowner in La Mesa since 2016. And I believe that's uh, why I too want to run uh, for or to be a part of the Healthcare District uh, Board of Directors. Really, the reason why uh, nurse leaders possess the capabilities necessary for board leadership with healthcare interpersonal skills to communicate effectively with healthcare professionals. I have years of experience of collaborating, coordinating. I've worked in the community. I was a home health nurse. I was a hospice nurse. I know what it's like to be out there coordinating um, services with other health professionals. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. I have to say this is down the race, and I ask for your support, your for a qualified nurse for the Grossmont Health Board of uh, Directors Zone Three. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Miller. Who do we have next, John? Lori Saldana, you're up. Hi there. Good evening. Thank you. Um, so I hope everybody is safe. This is really an incredibly dangerous um, storm that hit San Diego. Uh, so for those who don't know me, I'm Lori Saldana, former state legislator and uh, speaker pro tem. I serve with Karen Bass. Um, I've served on the Central Committee here in San Diego for the last few years. I was elected in 2020. Um, but I really want to talk about the women in the club who are running. Um, in the 78th and other assembly districts. Kathy Hyatt is running in the district. Rebecca Fielding Miller is running in this district. 
Uh, we have a lot of good women. Those who are in the room, if you could raise your hand right now and let people know. Um, we are really going up against um, a, a really tough uh, slate. So I call them the elected officials and their spouses slate, the labor slate, uh, the lobbyist slate, the elected official staff slate. These are all people who are running that have either direct uh, economic workplace connections uh, to City Hall or um, other elected officials. And looking around today, and I actually called into City Council and said, please focus on one job. Keep San Diego safe. I think you have more than enough things on your plate. I'm really disappointed that Sean Ely Rivera, Stephen Whitburn, the mayor, others are running, Raul Campillo. I think that those of us who are committee members, who are working in our, our free time, um, making choices that are important for voters in San Diego to hear, I think that we really have a lot to offer. And so please talk to your friends, talk to your work colleagues, talk to uh, people that you know through your community, through your neighborhood, because we will never get have as much money as the Labor Caucus and these other groups have to promote people. But what we do have is our, our communities and our ties to people. So yes, please be sure that you are supporting uh, Kathy and others who are running for Central Committee this year. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you for calling me out too. Appreciate it. And next we have Elise Birkenallen. Oh, hello, everyone. My name is Elise Pitkin Allen, and I'm running for the 79th Assembly District Central Committee. Uh, I've been in San Diego for the majority of my life. Uh, I've been actively in politics since Leon Williams ran way back in the day. Uh, I ran myself for San Diego Community College District, and I was endorsed by the party. I'm currently on the GO team for my neighborhood, and I have been for the last four or five years. Uh, I'm running because I think that uh, voices of, and the voice in my communities, not the voice, I think that my communities need a voice on the Central Committee, and uh, I would like to be that voice. I ran for uh, the delegates, Assembly delegates, a couple of times. I won both times, and one time I was elected as the chair. So I've had a lot of experience with the Democratic Party, and I'd like for your vote, please. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lees. And next we have Dr. Tiffany Boyd Hodgson. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you for being there in person. I wish I could be. I am uh, the on-call parent tonight and driving children around. I am currently the president of the Vallecitos Water District, and that was a very hard fought race. Uh, I ran against two folks at that time when I ran in 2020. The other two people who were also up for election, uh, or their seats were up for election, ran unopposed. They were Republicans, they got in without any opposition. And now one of them is on the city council. And he replaced uh, his seat with a, quote, diversity candidate. The diversity about that individual was that he was a white male under the age of 50. So I am coming to you to let you know that I do plan to run for re-election, and I hope that I will have your support. Many of you supported me in the past. I was endorsed by this club, and I am so grateful. Our work is not over. Um, as the president, I brought forward a motion during our last meeting to adopt a land acknowledgement as part of our standing business on our uh, board. It did not get a second, so the motion failed. I have also proposed a climate committee uh, devoted to climate action and climate mitigation. I did this in exchange for giving everyone the appointments that they wanted. And after I gave them all their appointments, they did not vote for the climate action committee that I proposed. That's just some of the nonsense that many of us as women in office have to deal with when we're when we're on when we're in the minority on our boards when we're dealing with a bunch of men. I'm asking for your support. Um, please also vote down ballot. Please vote down ballot. And if you know of any races where there's not a Democrat running, please try to find somebody. These races are so very important and they make local decisions. Thank you all. It's great to see you and I will see you again soon. Take care. Thank you, Tiffany. 
Yeah, Dr. Boyd Hodgson is also our outgoing external vice president, served us for the last two years, and we appreciate her. We are and the agenda is Angela on the Zoom call. Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped over elected officials. Do we have any elected officials? All right, next up on the agenda, I have the woman of color more breakfast update if Angela's on the Zoom. There she is. Good evening. And uh, thank you for everyone that braved the weather to be there uh, tonight. And um, Women of Color Roar, we are having our sixth annual event, February 3rd. Uh, it's always the first Saturday in uh, Black History Month. And so it's coming up in two weeks. And um, I'm happy and also a little sad to say that we're completely sold out. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy because it's great. Um, but it also means that, you know, a lot of people that want to be there are not going to be able to come to the event this year. And uh, but I want to start by always acknowledging uh, the Democratic Women's Club and Susan, who's there, who was the president when we first started and for, uh, you know, believing in us and uh, and sponsoring us from the very beginning. And so we always appreciate it. And um, also we are looking to uh, try to live stream uh, this year so that people can come. You know, we know we've outgrown the Jacobs Center, but it's in the community and it's kind of like our home. So um, so what we're trying to do now is to raise the funds uh, so that we can upgrade um, our cameras and audio visual so that we can actually do a nice uh, live stream and broadcast. Um, I, I did put the uh, flyer, I sent the flyer. I don't know uh, if it's something that, um, John, you can put up on the screen but I'll also um, send it to everyone. But, we, um, but we're gonna have an amazing, uh, powerful group of women. We're honoring um, uh, Stacey Plaskett, who is the Congresswoman who was one of the impeachment managers uh, for um, when Donald Trump was impeached by the Congress. And she's gonna be, we're gonna be honoring her. Barbara Lee is being honored. Um, and then our own uh, Crystal Irving and, uh, and then, um, Kelly uh, Todd Griffin, who has started an organization called the California Black Women's Collective, which helps to get more black women to run for office and to maintain, uh, for us to maintain the seats. And then uh, speaking, we've got, of course, Nora Vargas, who's the first Latina chair of the Board of Supervisors, our own Monica Montgomery Stepp, who is the first black woman on the Board of Supervisors here in San Diego. And we also, of course, have our own Secretary of State, Dr. Shirley Weber, and then um, Mia Bonta, who is the assembly member from Oakland and, and uh, Alameda County is gonna fly down that morning. And she's gonna also be talking and uh, giving a tribute to Barbara Lee. And of course we've got, you know, entertainment and we've got over, we're gonna have over a hundred uh, young people from schools that we sponsor in addition to community members. So we have a full house, but I do hope that uh, we can get your support in in us raising the funds to try to be able to live stream so more people will be able to to see the event. And if there's any questions, I open for questions. All right, my question is who's going to make the motion? Susan? Uh, <laughs> um, I would like to make a motion. Historically, this club was the very first donor for the women of color roar many years ago. There's a whole story about that, but I, um, um, I would like to propose that we um, support this event at the $1,500 level, which is the bronze level. Um, that's my question. Needs a second. Hang on. All right, the motion has been made by Susan and seconded by Yvonne. Are there any objections to this motion? Any on the Zoom call, John? Seeing no objections, the motion carries. Congratulations, Vandela. Well, thank you so much. And I look forward, and those of you that have bought tickets, um, which is the hottest ticket in town. <laughs> so I look forward to seeing you all in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much. 
so much. We're truly excited to, for that wonderful event. Always is such a great time. Okay, moving on. We have we have Genevieve on the Zoom call. I am here. All right, let John get you spotlighted. Hello. Oh my goodness. It looks like my camera's not doing very well. Give me one moment. Hopefully we can clear this up. Genevieve is the founder of Motivation in Action and MOGO, Moral Governance. So let's get Genevieve. There we are. Take it oh, away, Jen. Oh. Hi, everyone. Hi. All right. Are, are you ready for me to start? We are ready for you. Motivate us. All right. Let's do it. So I cannot tell you how much I was looking forward to being with you all in person. But as we know, we have had severe flooding in our neighborhoods today. And my neighborhood was hit very, very hard. And so I cannot be with you all in person, but I would not miss this for the world. And so I am just so happy to be here with all of you. Thank you for braving the roads and the weather for those of you who are there in person. And thank you all for being here online virtually with me in this amazing room. Sorry, men. This message is, you know, you can get something out of it if there's men in the room, but I'm here to talk to my democratic women. And I am just, again, just so excited, but also grateful for this opportunity to speak to such an inspiring group of women. I'm listening to the women running. I am listening to what we have going on in this room. And I can tell you that there is so much diversity and strength in this room and in this group. And I want us to celebrate that. I want us to celebrate our different backgrounds, our diverse experiences and our achievements. And so with that, I would like for us to start putting in the chat some of our accomplishments that we can celebrate tonight. Just start throwing them into the chat and Kathy, if you don't mind, maybe we can pass around the microphone to some folks who are there in person. Let's just shout out some of the things we've been able to accomplish maybe over the past year or something we've even accomplished yesterday. But let's celebrate. Let's start this conversation with celebrating our accomplishments and achievements because I know that we have some in this room. So I don't see anything in the chat yet, but I'm waiting because I know that we have some. Lori, I see your hand. Can you please um, tell us about an achievement or an accomplishment you are proud of and that you would like to celebrate? Yes, that um, those of us who joined to with the Central Committee to push for an audit of our jails where people continue to die under horrible conditions. And Akila Weber was the one who lifted up that request got an, a unanimous approval from the joint legislative audit committee and as a result of that audit we had a, a sheriff resign unfortunately we did not get a good replacement but um, that was the work of Akila Weber and dozens of people pushing to get that done and we also have legislation that's going through as a result of that so that was the power of people within the central committee within democratic clubs and we got that audit um, to show the entire state uh, what the challenges are to get our jails to have people stop dying in custody in san diego jails absolutely thank you so much we should absolutely celebrate that effort. These are efforts of humanity to recognize the humanity of every single person among us. And it does not matter if someone is incarcerated, they are still humans. And I want us to really think about that as we reflect on celebrations. That was huge. And I see that Susan has placed into the chat the election of Monica Montgomery Stepp. And that is, of course, to our county's board of supervisors. She is the first Black woman to be elected in the history of our 
County. So that is absolutely something to celebrate. Miss Elise Pipkin Allen is celebrating the founding of the Black and African Women Rise Democratic Club. Absolutely. I am celebrating that as a founding member. Heather Ferber launched a citywide campaign. Absolutely. We should be celebrating that. Stephanie Wells says she mobilized parents, students, and community members to support the implementation of ethnic studies and DEIB programs in Carlsbad schools. For you who may not know what DEIB is, that is diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. Absolutely, our students need that. Our parents need that. We need that in our community across the board. Andy says, red logistics and crowd build for a gubernatorial campaign launch. Absolutely, we have things to celebrate. And I wanted to start off with that because it is so important as we talk about vision, as we talk about inspiration, as we talk about motivation for the new year to recognize that we have accomplished so much already. So why would this year be different? I want us to recognize the challenges that we have faced in the past year, whether they are personal or professional, individual or group wise, but the way that we recognize the challenges sometimes and put a positive spin on it is to say, this was a problem, but this is how I overcame it. And this is why we celebrate. So we don't put the focus on the challenges once we've overcome them. And so right now we are already engaging in how I stay motivated. I look at the wins. I look at what we have accomplished to give me fuel for what the work still looks like for me to do. So thank you all so much for participating in that exercise of celebration. We have to celebrate our resilience. We have to celebrate our accomplishments. And a lot of you may know me politically. You know me because of my political endeavors, but there's a side of me that you may not be familiar with. And the side is that I am a professional motivational speaker. And I actually have a business that is called Oh my goodness, did I freeze? Can you hear me? I look like I'm frozen, but can you hear me? You're yes. not frozen. Okay. I'm frozen on my end and so are you all, but I'm going to keep on going. So I am the founder and the lead empower mentor of a motivational speaking firm by the name of Motivation in Action or MIA. And so what I do through Motivation in Action is I empower everyone to live on purpose and to write their own story. Now you're frozen. Hold on a moment. And I don't know. Shannon, we can't hear you. You did freeze on our end. Well, well, we're waiting to see if we get her back. One of the things that, that I would like us to do when we think about 2024 is what we want this club to do, what we want this club to be for us, to mean to us, and just think about that as far as our vision and so that we know to have so some direction of what you want out of it, what you want to get out of it, what you want to put into it. Because that's just something that we can be thinking about um, maybe we'll do an activity where we pass around the paper and everybody writes down their uh, their idea so that we can have everyone's opinion involved. Jen? All right, let's see if she gets called back in. Jen? 
she might have lost power. She is without power today and without it again. All right. Well, I guess we got as much as we could have of Genevieve, and we we're lucky to get that. <laughs> so hopefully we can get her to come back and, and come talk to us in person sometime soon. All right, we're going to move on the agenda to Yvonne Elkin. Yvonne's going to talk about our endorsement strategy, and hopefully we'll get along, get some judicial candidates here, and then we'll try to do a couple of endorsements tonight. Watch out for the wet spots there. So I'm an unfamiliar figure when it comes to endorsements. I know. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'll should I show should I tell my joke again? <laughs> okay, so I'm a rather unfamiliar figure and when it comes to endorsements at the Democratic Women's Club, which is not exactly true because this is now it's a joke. Cycle three. <laughs> Um, so, from my experience and our experience with our previous cycles, we, you know, I was the chair of the committee in the 18 to 20 and 20 to 22 cycles. Uh, what we saw was that we endorsed Penelope of, of, of candidates. We endorsed last cycle like 40 candidates. And with that endorsement, what they got was the ability to put our logo on their site. But they really didn't get a lot out of us. So the committee talked and we had a recommendation that maybe we narrow down the amount of people that we endorsed, the amount of precincts we endorsed in. And then along coming with coming along with that endorsement would be the backing of the club, the real backing. In other words, we would uh, sponsor phone banks, we would sponsor canvases, we would co-host fundraisers, we would do things to help that candidate actually win the race. Um, so that's what we're going to try this year. I don't know, you know, we're going to see how it works. And so what we're going to do tonight is we're going to look at 26 races. Um, so the committee and the board kind of looked at all the races that are going to happen in San Diego this, this cycle, and we we pulled out all of the ones that are going to be through through the primary, as well as a few that are going on that are just general election uh, races that could possibly be critical. Critical is the word that we want to talk about. Critical means it's a highly contested race. It's a chance that we might lose it as Democrats. We might flip it as Democrats. Or if between Democrats, it's highly contested. So we're going to get you a ballot tonight. And we're going to ask you to rate all of these, some, some or all of these 26 races. <laughs> you're going to get a 20, you're going to get a five point scale. And we'll just like, if you want to Amazon, five stars is the most critical. <laughs> And you really don't think it's critical at all, even like. Um, we're going to go through that process. We're going to look at the top 10 races that you all think, and I'm hoping that the uh, people on Zoom can hear me too. Uh, the top 10 races that you all think are the most critical in San Diego County this cycle. And then we're going to wait until the primaries are over. We're going to look at who, you know, who came through on the primaries to advance to the general. And if one of our races, only one Democrat came through and that Democrat was an incumbent, we're going to recommend a friendly incumbent endorsement for that. If, one, if a race had one Democrat come through, but they're not an incumbent, then we're going to recommend going through the proper process to endorse. If two Democrats come through, then, and, and we, well, either, either way, if two Democrats come through, then what we're going to do is we're going to say either this race is safe, it's going to be a Democrat win, and we can move on to 
number seven or number eight on our list. Or we can say, no, we still want to work on this race and we'll do a regular endorsement process bringing both candidates in to, to look at them for endorsement. So that's the plan. And what I was kind of thinking I would like to have people do tonight is you may all already have ideas of what you think are critical races coming up to the cycle. So if anybody wants to advocate, <laughs> I'm getting over an upper respiratory disorder <laughs> and I have that post respiratory disorder cough. Um, anyhow, if anybody here would like to advocate for a race um, that you think is going to be really critical this year, I'm going to give people a little bit of a chance to talk about that. And the same thing with people on Zoom. So if anybody wants to speak to a race that might be, that they think we should be rating high as critical, uh, please raise your hand on Zoom and we'll go through that with John as soon as I, you know, see if there's anybody here in the room who wants to do that. But first, I thought I was reading this part. Okay, so is there any? Oh, Yvonne? Who's second? Hold on a minute. Yvonne, this is Elise. Who's speaking? Elise. Elise, Elise. Oh. Elise can you want to wait a second? Let's, let's, uh, we'll, we'll call on you in a minute. Okay? Go ahead, Amber. I'm going to advocate. Hello. Yes. Okay. I'm going to advocate for my race in November, Oceanside City Council District seat number four. We were just deemed strategic. We were deemed strategically critical already by the party um, last April, uh -huh. and that was confirmed at the meeting that happened this weekend. And so they will be moving forward with endorsements for our race as soon as March, if there is no February meeting. So I'm going to advocate for our race. We are the third largest city in San Diego County. Again, we really have the opportunity to have a dim majority that has not happened in the Oceanside City Council and bring another woman on to the seat. So I'm going to advocate for Oceanside City Council District seat number four. Thank you, Amber. Anybody else want to advocate for a race? Mm -hmm. All right. I, I heard Elise wanted to raise her hand. Yes, can you hear me? I can. We're waiting for John to spotlight you. Oh, hi, Elise. Oh, hi. Hi. Um, I, I would like to advocate for a Tara Lawson Ringler's uh, race. Uh, I think that's going to be a critical race, not only for Democrats in general, but particularly for Monica Montgomery, who was just elected as the Board of Supervisors. Yes. Okay, thank you, Elise. Anybody else have? Francis? Hi, Francis. Hi, everyone. Myself and Mr. Bowie Noodle would like to um, really suggest that uh, Mary Brenda Miller's race in November, even though it's in November, needs to should take a lot of priority. Uh, she's got, she's clearly the most qualified, but uniquely, absurdly qualified for this race, but she's got a challenger who has already raised $100,000 and has, uh, happens to be married to a city council member. Uh, I want to also advocate that we find someone to run a write-in campaign against council member Raul Campillo. He just got bested for ethics violations. I don't know if y'all saw that. I would love to, you know, make sure he knows he can't just run up unopposed and then admit, uh, oops, I, yeah, sorry, I forgot to mention those in my filing after the, uh, afterwards. So if anyone can think of anyone who would be willing to run a write-in campaign, let's do it. Um, and let's uh, support Brenda. She works two to three nights a week in a hospital overnight she teaches so she needs everyone she needs the community backing so please scan that and donate thank you thank you yes. hi stephanie hello, hello. Uh, since, 
since Elise already got um, my number one, I think Heather Ferbert needs to be prioritized as city attorney. Um, I think she's going to have a, it's going to be a hard race because we have, you know, Brian Manchin running um, and she's the most qualified and we need her in that seat. So I would like to see her seat prioritized. Thank you. So I also, before we go too far, I want to talk a little bit about what you're going to see on your ballot because you're not going to see every single race. There are 56 races in the November election, and that does not include the special districts like water board, health boards, that sort of thing, and it does not include school boards. So if you added it all together, there's probably a hundred and some races that are going to happen in November. So the ballot you're going to see tonight is as does not include school boards or special boards. Um, school boards, we we made a conscious decision to pull them off of this ballot and look at them separately on a different day, because I think, in my opinion, all of our school boards all across every city and county and region and county are under attack, uh, and so. It's hard to pick which school board really needs our help. So maybe there are ways that we as a club can support our school board candidates across. So you won't see that tonight on your ballot. Like I said, you all don't also not see any of the special districts. There really are a lot of them. <laughs> so I'm not sure. Pardon me? Okay. All right. So, so anyhow, I just want to make sure you understood that before we move forward. All right, John. Brenda Miller. Hi, Brenda. I see you. I don't hear you. There. Okay. I can. Okay. It's challenging on the um, uh, cell phone. Um, I Stephanie took um, my uh, support of Heather Ferber. Uh, and, and and Brian May shine. Uh, she's just overly qualified, and you know, she's doesn't have the oh he doesn't have the background or the experience that she has. So I concur that she should be um, highlighted. All right. So I just also remember we're we're picking races tonight and not candidates. So so when we when we talk about Heather Herbert, we're talking about the city attorney race. And then we'll decide after the primary whether we're who and, and whether we're going to endorse the end race. Susan. Correct. I agree. Attorney Jim. Okay. So the congressional district 48, um, that's, uh, I just uh, been turned out. Is that right? And Carl Amaya was the Republican who I run. So there's three, um, there's three Democrats. David Houlihan has been endorsed by the party, but I would like for us to endorse in that race because Whitney Shanahan has a national um, presence. We don't know her in this club. She has a national presence for women's afford for abortion rights for women. And that should be our issue. Um, she has thousands and thousands of, of people that have signed on the petitions that she's done. And also she had a huge TikTok business. This is Congressional District 48. And uh, the, the, the person I, I'm, I'm really interested in. Congressional District? Congressional District. And that's not Rory Walden. That's... Is that it's right here? I saw it right at the ballot. Congressional District 48. I said not very well. No, no, I never said that. Oh, I thought I heard you. Uh, Carl DeMaio is running on the Republican. On, but he's running for 74 or 75. Okay. Um, so it's it's Daryl Lyson. I understand you're writing at the ballot, John. All right, so John is going to put, so let me tell you quickly about the ballot again. So you're going to receive a link to the ballot. If you are on the Zoom, you will get a link in the chat. So please go to the chat, click on the link, 
and you can start to uh, fill out your ballot. But again, you're going to be asked to rate each office, each race, by how critical it is. So five means it's super, super critical. One means it maybe is a little bit critical. If you don't think it's critical at all, leave it blank. For those of us here, you'll see a uh, QR code. So use your phone or whatever you have with you, pick up the QR code and you'll get your ballot. We're gonna give you what? A little while, because it's gonna take a while to get through the ball. So I don't know, Kathy, you just wanna give us that time to do that. Okay, all right, so let us know if you're having any trouble getting it. I wanna go get my ballot. Okay, so again, once you once you pull it up, you're going to fill out your name, your uh, email address, and then you will see that the races are divided by federal races, state races, county races, and different municipal races. Just members, paid members. But you don't have to have any, it's a membership thing, so you don't have to have been in here for two meetings, but you have to be a member of this club. So if you have a pink, if you have a pink ruler, that means you're a member of the club. If you don't have a pink ruler, you're not a member of the club. So you'll rate five for the most critical, four, three, two, one. If you do not think that that race is, is at all critical, it doesn't mean it's not important. It doesn't mean you don't like the candidate. It just means that, for example, the candidate is going to win no matter what we do. So let's say Juan Vargas. Juan Vargas does not need our help to change the outcome of his race. So yes, we want him to win. Yes, we want to support him but he doesn't need the resources of this club. That makes sense? Anybody have any questions on Zoom? You okay? Yeah, just check. Apparently, he wasn't able to get the team out of the table. Yeah. Do you want to go ahead and have a question? The bridge behind right, do you have a question? Yes. I just noticed that you have me listed as a member, but not a voting member. And I paid my dues today at 10 o'clock this morning. Yeah, you're a voting member. Okay, thank you.
Could someone remind me what the asterisk next to a name means? Hey, Laurie. Yeah, the asterisk is uh, incumbents. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. How is everybody doing? We still need more time. Looks like we might need a couple more minutes. Yeah. 
Could I uh, offer a comment while you're processing these responses? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Lori. Uh, thank you. I just I wanted to acknowledge the work that you're putting into this because uh, there are other clubs that do this process very differently, and this takes a lot of effort and thoughtfulness and work to develop the Google document to to do the rating. So. Um, I just really wanted to acknowledge the volunteers that have put this together because other clubs could learn from this and I hope they will. <laughs> um, and I, I appreciate you giving us a chance to to provide feedback and have this level of discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. I'm going to go through Ron Elgin and John Laughlin. And if you are interested in being more involved in the endorsement process, we are welcome to join our endorsement committee that is currently have one person <laughs> with with helpers. <laughs> right. And uh, one person that has already put in her time is ready to pass the torch. Exactly. So if anybody is interested in working on, on endorsements, uh, please, please reach out. Right. Because we need help. It's a lot of work, and uh, but it's very important. And, and just while we we're finishing up, um, what we do tonight, again, we are identifying the races that the club is going to focus their resources behind. That does not mean that if a race doesn't come in and talk to him or there's races that were not on the ballot and the club would like to see us consider endorsements in those races, we can do that. But those, you know, those endorsements will come with getting your getting our logo on your site. <laughs> and that maybe not necessarily the full force of the Democratic Women's Club behind. So is there anybody who has not yet completed their uh, completed their ballot that wants to? Do we see anybody possibly on uh, on Zoom that has is still working on it? Does anybody in the room need another minute? Is everybody ready to hit submit? All right. Has everybody submitted? Already submitted, right? Not everybody's done. And I. And if you have it here, here, if we could uh, finish up your motivational talk. There we go. Well, John doesn't have any. Welcome back. Yes, yes. It's good to be back. So as I was saying earlier, um, we have been impacted a lot in my neighborhood. And a part of that was no power, no gas, and no internet for hours today. And apparently my internet service is still being impacted. But again, celebrating resilience, overcoming challenges, I am back and going to continue uh, the talk. So I believe where I dropped off at was saying that a lot of you know me from my political endeavors, but you may not know that I am the founder and lead in power mentor of a professional motivational speaking firm by the name of Motivation in Action or Mia. And through Mia, which I named after my best friend um, who has overcome so much in her life, um, I empower everyone, but especially women and our young people to live on purpose and to write their own stories. And so when Kathy invited me to speak with this wonderful group about vision, motivation, and inspiration for this new year, I was excited to come. A quote that I say, um, and it is a, an original quote, 
is the best gift I've ever given to myself was harnessing the power of writing my own story and not allowing others to write it for me. I tell young people all the time not to ever give up their pen. Don't relinquish your pen because other people, if given the chance, will try to write your story. A part of my story growing up was that I grew up in a single parent home in Southeast San Diego. I was told by teachers, if you can believe it, that I was not going to go to college. I became the very first person in my entire family to not only graduate from a four-year university, but to also realize a childhood dream of mine to attend the prestigious Howard University School of Law where Justice Thurgood Marshall went to law school. I graduated, passed the bar, and became an attorney, as most of you know. After passing the bar, I went back to school to my mother's dismay and got a master of law. One thing that has always been a constant with me in my life was seeing myself achieving things. So for instance, when I was in fourth grade, I learned about Justice Thurgood Marshall. And from that day forward, I visualized myself attending the same school that he went to and doing the work that he did on the social justice and racial justice front. And so tonight, I want to give you all some of my strategies on how to keep your goals right in front of you. So this morning on Motivation in Action's social media, I posted a Motivational Monday message. I try not to miss Mondays, but sometimes I do. But this morning, I posted about 24 hours in the day. No matter where we live in the world, we all have been granted the same number of hours in a day. So we can talk about parity. We can talk about equity. This is one thing we are all given the same portion of. The question is, how do we use the 24 hours in our day? Do we use it or do we misuse it? Do we procrastinate instead of doing the things we know we should be doing in the moment? Do we create opportunities or do we wait for opportunities to come to us? This is what I keep in mind every single day. How am I using the gift of time that I have been given? And with that, I want to talk about how you can keep the vision right in front of you. I think all of you know, because you're all accomplished and still accomplishing, that it is so important to have a clear vision for your future. And we really have to set meaningful and ambitious goals. This is not necessarily just for the new year. And when I say set meaningful and ambitious goals, I am just encouraging you to shoot for the stars. I will also say set small goals because the smaller goals are also very important. You wanna set smaller goals and milestones. You wanna celebrate your progress and you wanna find inspiration in everyday successes. So please remember that. You wanna celebrate everyday successes. When I end my day, I journal, what did I succeed in doing today? How was I productive? That helps to fuel me for the next day. Even if it is just something small, I celebrate that. I wanna talk about the power of visualizing success and maintaining a positive outlook. My biggest tool are vision boards. This is a way that I stay motivated and I keep my vision right in front of me. So a vision board is a visual and a symbol of motivation and empowerment. And a vision board is really a powerful tool when you talk about vision, motivation, and empowerment. 
First and foremost, vision boards serve as a tangible representation of your goals and dreams. So when you select images and words that resonate with your aspirations, you create a very clear and vivid visual representation of where you want to be. And this clarity is crucial for setting and achieving goals. Vision boards for me are a constant motivation and a reminder. And so I place my vision boards in a very frequently viewed spot as a constant reminder of my goals. It helps me to keep my aspirations in the forefront of my mind. It serves as a source of daily motivation. And it's this repeated exposure that reinforces my commitment and it keeps me focused, especially when I'm faced with challenges and distractions. So I believe I have screen sharing capabilities. And so I would like to just show you how I have been able to keep my visions and my dreams in front of me. So I will show you, let's see. It says host disabled participant screen sharing. If I can get screen sharing capabilities, I would love to show you some of these images. Um, I had planned on bringing you my vision boards and actually doing a vision board exercise with you all tonight, but I decided that I could at least take pictures and let you see them here on the Zoom. So what you're looking at here is, here we go. You're looking at two vision boards. One is a one-year vision board and the other is a five-year vision board that my husband and I did together for past years. And we do one every single year, again, to keep our goals in the forefront. So we do a vision board collectively, but we also do a vision board separately. But you can see where we have goals about fitness and reading more books. And actually at the time that I um, that we put this vision board together, the one that's represented by the one-year vision, I started a book club thereafter. So that helps me read more books. Um, there's a plug for my, my book club. So if you're not a member, go ahead and join it. Um, but this vision board here, the five-year vision board, you can see there's a little professor who's right here um, on the bottom and kind of to the left. This particular goal of mine was something that had been on my heart and on my mind for a very long time where I wanted to be a professor and I wanted to teach young minds. But for some reason, I never could just apply. I would always talk myself out of applying. I would say, well, you've never taught before. And so no one's gonna trust you to teach. I mean, think about how self-limiting that is. I would never ever teach if I never tried to apply to get a teaching job. And so that year I decided that I would put that as a goal on my vision board. And every day walking past the vision board in my living room, it gave me the motivation that I needed to look at adjunct professor jobs and to then apply for them. And that very year when I did this in 2019, I got my first job as an adjunct professor. And I really do credit seeing that before me and knowing that because I set this goal before me, I knew that I needed to do something about it so that, that I could accomplish it by the end of the year or whatever the timeline was. And so that for me, is a very visual reminder of how when you manifest and when you have a very clear image that you see as a daily reminder that you will work towards the goal. So there is a vision board that I do not update. It is a vision board that I did many, many years ago and it represents just what I want overall in my life. And it is this vision board. And as you can see, there are the letters F-O-C-U-S, and it obviously spells focus, but the letters of focus spell out follow on course until successful. And so with this particular vision board, this is about me as a person and who I want to be, who I strive to be every single day and things that I am expressing over my life. 
And so you'll see on this vision board that in the upper right-hand corner, there's a picture of me and my great aunt and my aunt B who lived to be just days from her hundred year birthday. And so for me, this is a symbol of long life and longevity. These are things I speak over myself. You'll see that there's a check here and it is a check written for $1 million because I want to be able to be philanthropic. I want to be able to have the resources to bless other people who are doing great work in the community. Um, this one is actually written to my church, but for me is more of a symbol of being able to be a blessing and a resource for other people and for me not to be limited so that I can be a blessing for other people. You see, there's a big home there. This was before I uh, became a homeowner. I, I wanted to become a homeowner. And in the lower right-hand side, there's a picture of these two beautiful young twins. I knew that I wanted to be a mother. And so I put that on my vision board. There's also a closet that is very well organized because I wanted to have an organized closet. And, you know, it's just an example of the things that you can put on your vision board. I can tell you that I did not have an organized closet, but me having this right as I walk in and out of my door, my husband actually saw it and you know what he did? He paid to get my closet done, updated and organized. And now I have an organized closet. So your vision board ladies can also give instructions <laughs> to your partners. Now, <laughs> um, I really want to make sure that I highlight another reason why I really think that vision boards are such a great and powerful tool. They really evoke strong emotional responses. When you choose your images and words that inspire you, you are essentially creating a source of positive emotional energy. And it is this type of emotional connection that can be a powerful motivator, especially when you experience times of doubt, especially when your goals seem far off. And vision boards for me are really a manifestation of the power of affirmations. And so you'll see that on my vision boards, I have inspirational quotes, or for me, my faith is really big. So I have Bible scripture, Bible verses to remind me. And these are the affirmations that can empower you and reinforce a positive mindset. And when you repeat these affirmations, it can help you in building your self-confidence and maintaining positive attitude towards your goals. I also believe in the law of attraction and manifestation, as do a lot of people. And this is the law that suggests that we attract into our lives what we focus on. And so a vision board, again, is another tool to help you focus your thoughts and your energies on your desired outcomes. And it really helps to manifest these aspirations into reality. Vision boards are empowerment through creativity. Every year I start off with um, making vision boards and also hosting vision board parties. So let me know if you want me to come to the Democratic Women's Club and we can do a vision board party. It's never too late in the year to do it. But we want to make sure that we empower ourselves by selecting symbols and images and pictures. You can take pictures of your family and place them on your vision board. But also this can be used in a group setting where vision boards can create a sense of community and shared purpose. And by sharing your vision board with others, it can lead to support and encouragement and accountability. And these are all vital components of motivation and success. Now we know that as you grow, your goals will evolve. And so your vision board should do that as well. So your vision boards should allow you to adapt they should be adaptable. They should be flexible. You update your goals, which is why we have a one-year plan. And then we updated a five-year plan or the reason why I do a vision board every single year. But it really does ensure that your vision board remains relevant and inspiring. And the last reason why I love vision boards is because it really is a way to measure your progress and to celebrate your successes. I stopped... Um, getting rid of vision boards or going over my vision boards. And I just keep them. I frame them. I love them. I love to go back to my vision boards and say, wow, 
I accomplished all of these things. So really and truly, I believe that vision boards are more than just a collection of images and words. They're very dynamic, they're personalized, and I believe that they, they are a tool that can significantly impact your motivation, your focus, and your empowerment. And they really help you harness the power of visualization to keep you inspired and aligned with your goals. So with that, I will say that I hope that from this message, it was inspiring. And I would love to just urge you to embrace new opportunities and challenges as pathways to grow. And I want to highlight the importance of continuous learning and adaptation and resilience and encourage you to take risk and step out of your comfort zone. That's why I just love seeing what I saw in the chat, people stepping out, launching a campaign, a citywide campaign, all of the things that we were celebrating earlier, because as we take risk and as we step out of our comfort zone, these are essential steps to realizing vision, our collective vision for the communities that we want to live in. And I am just so confident in our collective ability and our personal abilities to achieve remarkable things in the new year. So I wanna wish everyone success. I wanna wish everyone happiness and fulfillment in all of your endeavors. With that, I'm gonna show you um, one last thing. And it is a way that I uh, also stay motivated and I write myself letters. I write myself letters and this is a letter that I wrote myself about the goals in 2024 and what I would like to see. And a part of this letter, I say that the only thing I'm gonna put on my menu, so the only thing that is up for grabs in me and what I will serve myself and what I, what I receive will be what God has for me. And that for me is what success looks like. So also that's another tool. You may wanna write yourself a letter and leave it and open it in a year. But letters to yourself can be a source of encouragement. And I always surround myself with just positivity and motivation. This picture here is a picture of my dining room table that I'm actually sitting at right now. And seeing that this is a new year and just surrounding myself with this positive message. Um, every month I do a different tabletop. This is January's tabletop. Um, but just making sure that you surround yourself with positivity and reminders of who you are and what you would like to see. Finally, I will say this in conclusion. Here is to a dream, I'm sorry, here is to a year of dreams coming true, of goals being met and new adventures for all of us. Remember that behind every successful woman is herself. So, Believe in your abilities to make a difference and let's make this year ours. Thank you so very much for having me today. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you taking your time and being here with us tonight. And we want to invite you back because I think you have something else we'd love to hear about and that is your candidacy for mayor of San Diego. So I hope we can see you next meeting and you can talk to us about that. All right, let's move back to our endorsement process. John, are we ready? Kind of. All right, all right, we're going to move on to the endorsement of the judicial candidates. I'm going to let um, Devon do that since she's our endorsement chair. <laughs> okay, so do we have candidates here? Oh, okay. So, so I know in the newsletter, you were all given access to the candidates' uh, questionnaires. So hopefully, you had a chance to, you know, had a chance to look through them because uh, they do talk about what their backgrounds are, why they're running, and what their you know, their qualifications are. So typically, what we do, I have to think back because I really wasn't ready to do thinking about how I was going to do this. Um, what we will take one race at a time, uh, seat, what are the two seat numbers? 43 and 41. Okay, so we're gonna start chronologically to his one, 41. So is that, who is it? Jimmy? 
Hi, can you hear me? Okay, so Jody, we're going to give you five minutes to speak to the club members. Okay, great. Thank you. Sorry, we're in um, Rancho Bernardo <laughs> at um, their club meeting and uh, Todd Gloria was here. So just finished up there. Uh, my name is Jody Cleesaddle. I had the pleasure of joining you all at your holiday party and at the speed candidating, which was so much fun. And um, I'm here to request your endorsement, uh, whether or not it involves phone banking, <laughs> I'd be happy to have it. Um, I'm running for San Diego County Superior Court, Judge uh, Seat 41. The seat doesn't actually mean anything, it's just a housekeeping. We, we could be placed anywhere in the county and our race is open to all county voters. So all 1.9 million registered voters, um, which is why we need the support of all the clubs um, to help get our names out. I do have the endorsement of the uh, County Democratic Party, as well as various Democratic clubs and Run Women Run, Lawyers Club of San Diego, which is the women's bar, um, a lot of our diverse bar associations, the Public Defenders Association and um, other groups. I'm hoping to hear this week from Labor to hopefully get their support as well. Uh, Tony Atkins and Todd Gloria um, have endorsed me and um, I'm meeting with Sarah Jacobs this week for her endorsement as well. And um, I have been a trial lawyer for 30 years. I am currently at the Attorney General's office where I'm the Senior Assistant Attorney General. I'm in the Civil Division. I oversee the tort and condemnation section statewide, supervising about 90 attorneys and paralegals. And um, I've been at the AG's office for 17 years. Before that, I was a partner at a national law firm, also doing civil law. And I've been very active in the legal community locally and statewide. I'm currently president of California Women Lawyers. I'm also a co-president of San Diego's Tom Holman LGBTQ Plus Law Association. And I've been active in a lot of other of our diverse bars. I've been on the board of Lawyers Club, on the board of the San Diego County Bar Association. Um, and I'm active in uh, bench bar organizations, the National Association of Women Judges. Um, I talked about some of my activities in the endorsement questionnaire I submitted. So hopefully you have that. Um, but I've, I'm running for judge because I want to make sure that our courts work for our community, that, um, that I'm committed to treating everyone who comes to court, um, whether they're a defendant, an attorney, whether they work in the court, treating everyone with dignity and respect, and hearing all cases fairly, objectively, and thoroughly, and um, working to make sure that uh, I overcome any implicit biases I have and and hearing and understanding cases um, from all perspectives so that I can make fair decisions. I'm also committed to equal justice and equal access to justice. Um, and I've done a lot of work in that area um, with the bench bar community, uh, bench bar committee in San Diego. Um, my opponent is a male district attorney who is um, endorsed by the Republican Party. And um, I don't personally know him, but uh, I know what my values are. And I think we're probably, you know, uh, have some things in common, but a lot of things uh, we have different values probably. Um, and I, I'm hoping that you all will provide me with your endorsement. And even more importantly, that your members will talk about the judicial races with your friends and neighbors, um, because most people don't know who the judicial candidates are. They don't know who some of the down ballot races are. Um, and we really need your help in getting the word out so that we can reach the 1.9 million voters in San Diego County and um, and get them to vote in these races, not ignore them, uh, and, to, and to support our um, uh, support candidates like myself and Corinne Shepard, who you're going to hear from in a moment. Um, who are endorsed by the Democratic Party, share your values and uh, bring more something different yeah. to the bench than just the you know sort of prosecutor's perspective so thank you very much thank you Jim. all right so if you're on zoom and you have vm by your name that means that you are qualified to vote in endorsements if you're in the room and you're given little pieces of paper like this well, okay, but so Susan needs to play. No, Susan needs them. But if you have a fluid and all piece of paper, okay, I need 
you to take the blue one. And that's how you're going to vote in this particular race. So it's for the Judicial Superior Court, seat 41. Jody is the only candidate that is a Democrat. So what I want you to do is either vote endorse or no endorsement. So you have a choice of either endorsing her or no endorsement in this race using the blue. All right, I'll give you a couple minutes and then we'll have a round of applause. Yes, please write it down. So in the meantime, We're all we're all so well prepared. <laughs> if you were on Zoom, I would very much like you, if you have a VM by your name, to raise your hand if you want to endorse. Question: I think I'm a voting um, member, but I have just an M. Just endorse or no endorse. I'm sorry. Please ask your question again. Um, I, I I joined at the holiday party, so I would think I would be a voting member, not just a M, right? Well, you have to attend two prior meetings as a member in the last year. Oh, got it. Okay, so in a couple meetings. But the people with VM means that they are both member in good standing today and have attended at least two meetings as a member in the previous year. Madam Chair. <clears throat> I'm listening. Madam Chair. Yes. I have the same question, David Milroy. I joined a few meetings ago, and I've been to two or three meetings. Oh, and I don't even have a member by my name. So David Milroy. Pardon me. Oh, so you did not renew. In December? Oh. Oops. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't know that. Um, I think some people are still unaware that we now renew every year in December. It can be extended to the beginning of January, but um, dues are are paid now in December of the, the previous year. So 2023, you needed to renew. December of 2023, you need to renew for 2024. Okay. So you, you can uh, pay now. Oh. Uh, this meeting that you can't vote today, right? You needed to pay up before uh, the meeting. This is the meeting so sorry, David. Okay. But if you renew now, you could vote in the next endorsement meeting. I'll that do we that. Have. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So the the requirements to endorse in any specific race. Well, first of all, I think we better check and see if there are any no endorsements. So anybody who wants to vote no endorsement on the Zoom. No? Okay. So, so the requirements to endorse are that we get 60% of the members present, voting members present. And obviously we have that because it's 17 to nothing. So Jody, congratulations. You've received the endorsement of the Democratic Women's Policy and the Abraham. Say it again. Yeah. <laughs> Jody, are you here? Oh, 
Oh, we can set her name now. Okay. Jody, are you back? I'm back. All right, congratulations. By the end of the the Democratic Women's Club of San Diego County tonight, you will receive our endorsement. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, let's move on to Superior Court, Court Judicial Seat number 43. Arand? Hello. Are you here? I can't see you. I'm yet. here. Can't see me. Can you hear me? I can hear you well. So, hi, Corinne. We're going to give you five minutes to speak to the pub, and then we will vote. Thank you. Great. Good. Well, oh, sorry about that. There's a little delay there. Good evening. I am Corinne Shepard, and I am also running for Superior Court, but I am running for seat 43. I have been a family law attorney for 15 years. I'm a board certified specialist in this area. I am also a adjunct professor at Thomas Jefferson School of Law, and I teach California civil procedure. And what inspired me to run was that I looked around the county and I saw that there were uh, very few actual judicial officers who had ever practiced family law. So we have 27 family law courtrooms and only six bench officers right now have actually practiced family law. And I find that most people come into contact with the legal system through family courts. And I find that we can do a much better job serving our families and our children in our community if we can provide them with bench officers who have the much needed experience in family law. So that is what inspired me to uh, take the leap uh, and, and start running. Like Jody, I have an opponent, and my opponent is also uh, endorsed by the Republican Party. She's a career prosecutor, um, and she is also looking to take on this seat, much like much of the other prosecutors, with that just pathway in to uh, the bench. And so I'm coming in from a different practice area. In fact, I don't think any other family law attorneys have have run a campaign, they normally become appointed. But the appointment process is very, very long. And I find that our, our families really need relief now. Um, the only two areas in town where there are actual bench officers with family law experience are in North County and Central, leaving none in East County or in South County. And unfortunately, there are Hi. so many people who are non-native speakers, self-represented. Good night. <laughs> um, who who don't um, have representation to help them. And then they have these new judges coming in who don't know a practice area. And we also don't have paid for uh, court reporters anymore. And what we're finding is that our, our families and people who don't have these attorneys available to them are just really not getting the justice that they need and that they deserve. So I really wanna make that change for them. I also do a lot of other kinds of teaching. So I teach, um, mandatory legal education and I teach uh, fitness classes and I'm taking a leadership uh, class right now as well. So I've, I'm constantly looking not only to improve myself, but help to teach and improve around me. I do a lot of volunteer work, mentoring, that kind of a thing. And so I really look at um, not only how can I um, improve myself, but how can I help my community? And so this was how I felt I could best help my community, that I could bring this knowledge, experience, and this desire to be a teacher to the bench and to the county of San Diego. Um, and of, of course, this is a countywide race, so it's a lot of people to try to get in contact with. Um, so this is why, of course, the clubs are so important because it really helps us reach out to those who are so activated and motivated to, to really help us um, make people who have the same values get up on that bench because, of course, we may start here at the trial level, but we may go up as well. So one of the really key things uh, is that this is the only time that the voters really directly vote on a judge. And after that, uh, the leaders will, will put them into position. So this is where we, the people really have a voice in who's going to make these really important legal decisions and who's going to administer justice in our system. And then those people will be the pool that uh, is chosen from. So it's really important for us to have people with really strong values go up. And I, I think especially in family law, 
uh, it's important because in family law, more than any other practice area, there's a lot of broad discretion given to the judicial officers. So we really want to make sure we we get those people that we know are going to hold really important values and making really important decisions. Um, and we can have that voice and say, these are the people that we not only want to make decisions today, but into our future. So that is uh, why we are, both Jody and I, requesting the endorsement of, uh, well, she got it. So that's why we're both uh, requesting the endorsement of, of the club. Um, as far as other endorsements go, uh, we I have a long list of other uh, Democratic club endorsements as well. Um, I have uh, a bunch of professional endorsements. So I've got several judges. I've got uh, the Family Law Bar Association has endorsed me. So there's uh, a, a nice mixture of, of other uh, important clubs and professional endorsements as well. And I, I'm not sure what my timing is looking like, so I don't want to talk too much longer. Five seconds. Five seconds. Uh, okay. We all win with Corinne. That's my slogan, power of inclusivity and, and all coming together. I... <laughs> Thank you so much, Corinne. Thank you. All right. We're going to put you in a breakout room for a couple minutes while we vote. All right, again, your, your choices are endorse or no endorse. And then while, while people are writing on their little slips in here, we will uh, go on to Zoom. And if you would like to endorse in this race, please raise your hand as long as you are a voting member, BM. All right, has everybody voted that is on Zoom that wants to vote for endorsement? Okay, is there anybody on Zoom that wants to vote for no endorsement in this race? No, okay. Lori said no endorsement. Oh, I no, sorry, I was late. I was voting for the endorsement. Thank you. All right, again, it is a unanimous vote. Uh, and we are endorsing Corinne in C43 for Superior Court. So we want to bring her back. You can't like get her out before that? She won't know to. Oh, I thought it was like popped up and said you're invited back to the They are such good rule followers. We have a little more saying. All right, Corinne. Hello, Corinne. Are you back? There you are. Okay, thank you. So, John, the room is, we can't see her. Okay. Can, can you hear me? Can you hear? Oh, is it better? Yes, we're all together. So, so congratulations. You have also received the endorsement of the Democratic Women's Club of San Diego County with a unanimous vote. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. All right, so 
Uh, I think we want to go back and finish up our results from our voting before. Are we ready, John? Sort of, right? <laughs> what do we need? Right. Right. For those of us in the room that might not know, we have over 20 people on our Zoom as well as those of us in the room. That's awesome. Yeah. We had a good turnout today, even though, even though the weather was even though. So it, it prompted everybody to call it on Zoom. <laughs> Todd Gordon has, um, um, has announced a state of emergency for the city. Oh, yeah. You have to repeat that for him. So, okay, so Todd Gordon has announced a state of emergency for the entire city. Oh, I should be home. I should be here. <laughs> Between here and Mayor Mason, it seemed to be okay, though. How much flooding still? We know. Mm -hmm. Oh, so after Laurie, thank you so much for doing all the hard work to get this done. That, that was jinx what we're doing. Because at the last minute, I added in an extra section. The one there, about, yeah. So the results are a little difficult to understand. What we're going to do, what I'll do after later this evening, is I'll break them out and make it easy to understand. But let me just share this first to show kind of how we're doing this. So hopefully everybody on the Zoom can see that as well. Um, and so yeah, just to explain, as Yvonne mentioned earlier, we used a system which is commonly referred to as star voting. Because when you've got a very long list of candidates, to put them in a range, we just like the order, it's quite hard. Whereas doing a star voting thing is quite easy. Um, and so we use th this organization, um, starvoting.org, um, does a nice little handy thing where you can use a Google form for doing it for you. So anybody can run a star voting election, you just score them, like you do on Amazon. And so let me just. So we did that this evening for this ballot, which you all saw, and we can see here that from here, oops, not this one, this one must be, uh, yeah. so this is what I was getting, getting confused before, we put these tabs I had open, there was the one second, yep, yeah, okay, so these are the responses that we have from everybody this evening, and so just to check, if you can hide all this list, if you voted this evening but you don't see your name on the list, then let me know, because it means for whatever reason the form didn't come through. Uh, but also the form did come through, and then you can see across all the different places, everybody filled them in with the stars one to five, and then everybody filled in the question at the end to say that they had submitted the, the ballot. And then what the nice little star voting thing will do is it will automatically, uh, he says, Jack across all these tabs, place them, into an order, a top to bottom order of the one that everybody thought the most important to the one that, you know, maybe nobody voted for. But because the Muggy Museum made a mistake and created sections, rather than having more than one long list, in the automatic thing that automatically calculates, like an impress you all this evening, it's put them all in a section. And it hasn't ranked them top to bottom across all sections automatically. Obviously, all the data is there, and I can do it again. I was trying to do it feverishly earlier, but I'm not 100% sure I got it right. But you can see here, just for interest, within the congressional district ratings, for example, this is how it ordered them. And if you look at the raw detail for that, you can see the various scores and how it puts it in the top to bottom. If you go to the website, you can see the methodology behind it. So I'll just briefly run through the races because this is probably not the interesting thing everybody thought they'd see this evening. Um, you know, as to which race overall in the whole county is considered most important. But that result is in here. I just can't easily pull it out of the data. Um, but yeah, so you can see obviously the Senate District 39 was the most important because it's the only one. But of the assembly districts, how people rank them of the people who voted was the 79th they considered the most important. For the club to endorse in 
and the 78 were leased. Hammond County Board of Supervisors races, District 3, people thought was most important. Of the San Diego City races, City Attorney came out top, then the Mayor, then 3, 4, and 9, Shula Vista, 4, and 3, Carlsbad, 2, and 3, La Mesa, again, was the only race in La Mesa, and then for Oceanside. Uh, what's that the same motion? I cannot quite see that from there. District 4, and then the Mayor, and then District 3. So what I will do later, when I'm not kind of figure it out, is I will put these in order and then we we'll send them around in the newsletter that Hannah sends out afterwards. Um, and we can rank them top 10, I think, if I'm looking for, as the, as the most important ones across the whole county. I get any, any questions on that? The anticipation. John's making us wait just a little bit longer. All right, thank you so much, Yvonne. Appreciate it. And John, thank you for your work on that. Oh, no, I think, thank you. So, once we get the final results, we will now wait until after the uh, primary election results are certified. We will then know who actually is advancing in each of those top 10. And we will go back and then start processing through endorsement of actual candidates. Okay. So we won't be endorsing the, for the final. Correct. Just the two judicial races that we just did, because they're they are settled on March fifth. So if anybody would like further involvement in the endorsement process, those of you on Zoom, those of you in the room, please reach out because we could use your help. And it's fascinating and really important. Another question on Zoom? Lori, go ahead. Uh, yes, can we uh, please make sure that our members know which members are running for Central Committee? I understand yeah. there's a lot and we can't do actual endorsements, but could there be a communication sent out so people are aware what at least what um, club members are putting themselves out there for central committee um, in the, and that's only the yeah. primary election. We're going to cross-reference our members list and the uh, registered voters list, and I will put up a list of members that are running for each assembly district. Just been waiting for everyone to review their dues this month. So that is coming soon, I promise. All right, we're going to move on the agenda to business, unfinished or new, if anyone has unfinished or new business. Seeing none, I will move on to officer reports. Patricia. Patricia is our membership director. She's going to tell us how many members we have. We have 72, correct? <laughs> Beatrice will tell us. 76 now, because the number of people joined like, are renewed uh, tonight. So um, again, a lot of people don't realize that um, dues have been um, <laughs> required in December, and uh, some people are paying in January. There's a 30-day extension, um, but if you want to continue to participate as a member, uh, please, please pay up. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so we're using the calendar here. And so everyone's dues expire in, in December. Everyone's dues are, are good until we give a grace period until January 30th. So hopefully we have a steady stream of people renewing and I'm feeling good about where we are with renewals. Let's go to our treasurer's report, Beatrice. Hey, um, as Patricia said, we have about 76 members and we probably have about 70 members left over from 2023 that are just waiting to re-register. We look forward to them joining us again. Uh, Backwise, um, sitting quite nicely, we have almost six thousand dollars in the account and so next month we'll be looking at the budget for next year. Thanks. Thank you, Beatrice. 
Andrea, everything? Nothing? Okay, Hannah is on Zoom. Can you see if Hannah has an office ready report? I have nothing. Thank you, Hannah. What about Tiffany? Are you still on? Angela or Elise? There's Tiffany. Do you have an officer's report, Tiffany? No, I don't have a report this time. Thank you all for allowing me to serve with you. Thank you. Angela or Elise, do you have an officer's report? All right. Hearing none, I will go on to announcements. Anybody? There was an announcement that I saw that came across my email about um, a homeless seminar. Let me find it real quick. Yeah, try to help him find it. He said keep an eye out for it. But he had it yesterday. He bought some he put he put some gas. Yeah. I'm gonna share this to John and he can it's an event that's coming up at City College. United Nations special got it coming up on uh, Wednesday night. Yeah. So this looks like an event. It's a free event. So there's a QR code if you'd like, if you're interested in going. And it's about uh, adequate housing and how we can do better in San Diego with our homeless. Exactly. We've got Colleen Cusack and Jenny Jones, right? And then the keynote speaker. I'm not going to try to pronounce the gentleman's name. Oh. Lori, would you like to speak? Uh, yes, thank you. Just to advise people that this is actually part of um, a series of uh, three days where the special reporter or reporter will be visiting um, various locations around San Diego, talking with advocates. So if you would like to provide some information during the address, um, provide some feedback on homelessness and housing in San Diego, this is the second time we've had a United Nations um, special reporter here. They do a very detailed report and present it. So everyone's feedback is very welcome and um, it, it should be an interesting presentation. This is a person who has visited places all around the world to uh, evaluate housing needs. And San Diego is uh, going to be part of that report. Right, so there are two events that I've, the one that John already put up is at the Point Loma, Nazareth University, and then there's one at City College, which... That's the QR code for the Point Loma Nazareth. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's City College. And then there's another one, sorry, uh, Wednesday at City College and Thursday is Point Long. And uh, Kathy? Can I yes, just go ahead? I, I just mentioned, uh, and I put it in the chat earlier, but Tomorrow, the city council is going to be um, considering the mayor's uh, effort to weaken the surveillance oversight measures that were passed, the trust ordinance, at two o'clock. So I just flag that for everyone. Maybe you want to call and make public comment or show up in person. I'll be there. Thanks. Right. City council tomorrow at two o'clock. Any other announcements tonight? All right, see, oh. Just to remind everybody that we have a map for the only 12th in the county that has an app. The Democratic Women's Club is the only club in the county that has an app available both uh, on the Google and the Apple uh, Play Store. Yes, so just go to the App Store and type in Democratic Women's Club and you can download our app. And it's really cool. You can get all of our newsletters, all of our meeting information right there on your app. All right. Any other announcements? 
Seeing none, we reached the end of our agenda and we are adjourned. Thank you so much, everyone. Really appreciate you coming out and bringing the elements to me. Safe travels home. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you.